Hello everyone, welcome to Chessvisor, your wise choice to improve your chess. In today's video, I'm going to show you a game played between Magnus Carlsen and Ernesto Enerkov. And it was played in World Blitz Championship in the year 2017. So before we begin this video, if you are watching this channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified for the future videos. So here, Magnus plays the move e4 and Enerkov replies with the c5, the Sicilian defense. And after this move, Magnus plays this a3 move which is not recommended for uh, uh, for uh, intermediate players or even uh, beginner players because uh, the one important principle I would like to highlight is that you should not move uh, the pawn unnecessarily which, uh, which, which does not serve any purpose, right? So this is what he plays anyway but here uh, Enrique plays knight c6 developing a piece and here comes b4. So after c takes b4, a takes b4 and after knight takes b4 we have d4 gaining more space in the center that is the idea of this gambit. And after this move he plays d5 striking back in the center and uh, here Magnus uh, simply plays c3 kicks the knight as well as uh, defense d4 point. And after knight c6 and uh, uh, he takes d5, queen takes d5 we cannot play the move uh, knight c3 and that's the drawback of playing c3 pawn to c3. So after queen to uh, queen takes d5, we have knight a3 uh, trying to go to the b5 square. And after bishop f5, he plays knight to b5 trying to uh, fork everything. And after this move, the uh, rook c8 is pretty much four, so he has to play rook to c8. And after knight takes a7, knight takes a7, we have rook takes a7. And after this, he simply plays e5. Again, uh, he is striking in the center and uh, he wants to open the center. Because uh, as you can see, uh, it clearly shows that uh, black has developed three pieces and uh, white has managed to develop only one piece, right? So that's why he wants he wants to open the center. And similarly, uh, he doesn't uh, develop the uh, king side pieces and his king is also in the center. So that is also we have to note. So here after uh, a e5, we, he plays knight f3 developing a king side piece. After e takes d4, we have knight takes d4 on board. And after bishop to d7, dropping the bishop back, we have knight to b5. What's the point? The queen is hanging. You cannot touch the knight. So uh, you have to take the queen here. So queen takes d1 check. And after king takes d1, we have bishop to c6. So after this move, uh, uh, after uh, bishop to c6, uh, Magnus plays this uh, a tactical move. That is bishop to d3. Why it's a tactical move? Uh, how it is a tactical move? Because uh, it looks like that uh, white is losing a pawn, right? But how it's a tactical move? Uh, let me show you how so in case if you uh, capture on g2 then we have this uh, following sequence of uh, rook e1 check you can block with the knight that we will se uh, see separately after this continuation and if you play king to d8 then we have a bishop f5 hitting the rook and you cannot lift the rook along the c5 in case if you do we have the back neck issue and say for example if the rook goes to c5 then we have rook a8 check and the, the rook has to come back immediately <clears throat> and we have uh, rook takes c8 is a beautiful checkmate right and if we go back in this position after this check if you block with any piece uh, sorry knight e7 then we have the problem of uh, knight to d6 and uh, this is the same scenario if you block with the bishop as the bishop is pinned we have the fork so that's the issue and that is why he plays this move uh, bishop to d3 uh, uh, considering these tactics in mind and after this he plays bishop to c5 uh, develops a piece at the same time he gains the time on the rook and uh, before uh, he moves the rook he plays first e rook even check and after this uh, the check have must be uh, blocked so he plays knight e7 and now comes bishop to a3 tactically defending the rook so if you take the rook in this position we have rook uh, rook takes e, e7 check and after king to d8 and we have this winning continuations so in this position uh, after bishop a3 he plays bishop takes a3 and now uh, rook takes a3 is coming and after this move he plays rook to d8 pinning the bishop and here comes knight to d4 blocking uh, the spinning idea as well as uh, it is putting pressure on the c6 knight as well i mean uh, bishop so after this move he plays king to d7 and uh, magnus plays rook a7 and now the pawn is pinned that means uh, any time uh, if it is required we can definitely take the c6 bishop and the king is defending but still it's just a note and after this move he plays rook h8 uh, now the rooks are connected and uh, almost black is coordinating well in this position 
and here we play uh, i mean magnus plays king c2 and now uh, he is also coordinating all his pieces and the rook is going to be doubled on the a file or uh, if it is required he will be doubling on the e file also and here in this position inner cow plays king c7 uh, trying to attack the rook and here comes rook to b1 trying to block the king's way and after this move he plays rook to b8 anyway so after this uh, f3 so in all this position where g2 was hanging he cannot take that because of uh, tactical reasons so in this position after f3 he plays knight to d5 centralizing the knight and after this move magnus plays knight takes c6 and after king takes c6 and in this position after bishop to b5 check he plays king b6 and in this position we can take the rook but the thing is our rook is already hanging so we have to do the desperado right so we have uh, i mean magnus is doing the rook takes b7 check and in this position uh, energy of uh, king is already in check and since it was a blitz game and uh, he tricked magnus in this position by playing this move uh, and in this position actually the computer will not allow us to put the knight on e3 that will give the check to the king and in the continuation magnus played uh, uh, interestingly he played king to d3 without knowing that he is already he has already given the check to the opponent's king and he uh, he is giving the check back but he, he is not realizing that and uh, what happened in the game at this point uh, Carlson uh, could have uh, already uh, what do you say uh, Carlson could have climbed the victory uh, by pointing his illegal move to the arbiter but the thing is he immediately moved the king out uh, out of the danger to the king to d3 and inner cow stopped the clack and he acted smartly and he called the arbiter and claimed the victory on the basis of Carlson uh, illegal move. So it was a double illegal move actually and later on Carlson was not happy and he appealed and then uh, what happened uh, uh, the organization uh, I mean the arbiter was telling that inner cow you must continue the game otherwise you will be losing the game. Then he said I, I'm not going to play the game so uh, the game is uh, i mean basically carlson won the game uh, in this position if you are wondering about any tactical ideas uh, say for example uh, rook takes b7 and after king takes b7 it is even completely winning position for uh, uh, white so after bishop takes e8 is a discovery and after king c7 we can even take the rook and go into this completely winning end game and uh, yeah this is a, a weird uh, situation in the in the tournament uh, that too in um, uh, world bliss championship so yeah uh, you know that uh, you already made the illegal and uh, your opponent is in a hurry he uh, he didn't notice that and uh, you are actually again claiming that you made the illegal and actually Carlson did not make anything illegal as far as I or uh, my knowledge is concerned and uh, yeah so what do you think about this uh, uh, let me know your ideas thoughts in the comment section below and if you like this video please uh, give it a thumbs up and in case uh, still if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel chess visor please consider subscribing to the channel as usual this is chess visor your wise choice to improve chess